Hello everyone! Welcome to my April bullet journal plan with me video and today we are going to set up this spring cottage core inspired theme together. So let's begin this setup with this half page painting of a cottage by the lake scenery. I will be using my Holbein gouache paints for the entire setup and you will find all the supplies I am using listed down in the description box below. I taped the edges with washi tapes and then started by painting the sky with a flat brush and the clouds with a small round brush. You might be wondering why this painting is half of the page, but don't worry, it will be turning into an idea that I've never done before. I already sketched a picture prior to painting, so I'll have a guide to each of the elements in this illustration, but since I'm using gouache, the sketch will be pretty much covered, especially when applying an opaque consistency. After the sky and the road, I painted the initial layers for the rest of this picture. I rarely paint nature with gouache, so I was pretty unsure at first on how I will execute the whole painting. But after these layers, I thought it would be easier for me to start adding details on the bushes first. I wanted this to have variations in size. So I outlined the shapes with thin subtle strokes of white paint and then I moved on with filling in the shapes with texture. I'm using a small round brush to create small messy dots with tapping movements. You can see me add darker shades on the bottom of the bushes and to also separate each bush from one another. And then I gradually add lighter shades for the highlights on top of them or on the sun side. I didn't bother to add highlights on the upper left bush because it will be covered by a tree later anyway. On the arch bush, I also added some red flowers to make it a bit interesting. And then we will move on to this tree I was talking about and it's going to be a cherry blossom tree just speaking from the left side. Since we will have a lot of greenery here, I thought the tree would stand out using a different color. Next is painting the bridge with a dark brown color and also add some shadows of the tree on the road here since the light is coming from the left. Then I proceeded with painting the rest with flowering shrubs to add color and structure to the roadside and on the other side of the lake. I played around with blues and reds and yellows for the flowers. I did a painting in my sketchbook in my previous video with the same technique for the greenery, so it was helpful to get me a bit of a practice for this painting. The next step I focused here is the lake. I painted the shadow reflection of the arch bush, the bridge, 
and along the sides of the bushes with a mixture of a little bit of black to the blue paint we used for this one. And to give more realistic look to the water itself, I'm adding some thin horizontal strokes of white paint in between the shadows. Since the bushes are nearer to the water, I'm adding green shades on top of the shadows underneath them. And then it's time to focus on adding details to the cottage. I painted the shapes of the windows and doors first with dark brown and some texture to the roof. I'm using a white gel pen for drawing the windows and doors and then I'm painting small bushes on the front and some are trees on top that are growing behind the cottage. Now I have to tell you that I sadly won't be able to show you the process for the next steps of this cover page because the clips for this part and to where I ended on the day I filmed it were all corrupted. <laughs> So I was sulking for a day, but yeah, we have to move on and I thought I'll just explain to you what I did next. So here is the final output for this cover page. So we have a half page painting over here and then I utilized the spaces below for some events and notes. And then on the left side, as you can see, there is a cutout over here and I'm using the space left on this page for a simple calendar layout. Flipping it through, this is how the cutout looks like. The scene is a girl wearing this coral pink and very cottagecore dress who is sitting on this tree and is like looking at the cottage in a distance. I just measured from where I should paint the girl and tree so when I cut out the negative spaces here, it won't look weird. For the titles, I chose a serif font, but for the first letters, I made them with a swash or a typographical flourish. I usually write a quote on the left side of the cover spread, and this time I just wrote this quote by Rainer Maria Rilke in a simple writing just to balance things here since we already have a painting heavy cover. And now this is where I finished filming on the specific day where my raw footages were corrupted. I am making a separate spread for my main focus and goals. I finished on the main focus section and the goals title. So now let's continue creating the layout of the goals section. This layout is the same with my goals layout from February. I am drawing three rectangular frames with concave corners. I also added some botanical line drawings around them. top I'm writing the specific goals I wanted to achieve this month and then I'm adding dividers so that below I have a space to write down some actions I need to take in order to achieve these goals. Then we are going to do another painting here. I placed some vertical washi tapes off camera to save us some time. I wanted to paint a girl walking in front of fences with flowers, so these washi tapes are masked for the fences and to also allow me to spread this green paint quickly. You can also use a masking fluid if you have. In my case, I don't have one, so masking tapes or washi tapes can do the trick. I tried to make the upper part of the background a little lighter and then I added some grass in between. After that, I removed the washi tapes and painted the fences with a light yellow color. Then I added some wood texture to them by adding thin strokes of brown paint. Then 
Then I'm working on the bushes in front of the fences. I layered different shades of green and white. I recommend doing this with a light hand because I was doing it quite with pressure on my hand. So the strokes look kind of thick, especially for the flower stems. I also made the base or the ground even darker. And after that, I added grasses below using the same technique I used in my cover page. I used this big round brush that is a bit damp and dry and spread the bristles a bit to create this small strokes faster. But if you want a more defined strokes for this, you can always go for the detailed brush and do the strokes one by one. You can use either of these techniques, whichever you feel comfortable with. I am using both techniques anyway here too, so you will see more of that later. I randomly painted the flowers with different colors here with just simple round shapes. Some are bigger and some are smaller for variations. On the left side of this fence, I am painting flowering vines on top. With the same tapping movements, I layered some green shades with more of the shadows on the right side and the light source on the left. I made the shape thicker on top and thinner on the bottom, then I added pink flowers, but you can also change the colors that you like. Now we're painting our main character in this illustration. I wanted to paint her dress with light blue, but I ended up with white instead and I'm really happy that I went with it. I'm using light gray to paint the folds on the fabric and the shadows. I also wanted to portray a girl that is frolicking in this scene, but in the end, it just looked like she's tiptoeing, <laughs> but it's okay. Then she's also wearing this lovely brown hat with white ribbon on it and painted her wavy blonde hair with light yellow and light brown color. Lastly, I also painted some flowers that she picked along the way in her dresses pocket and that finishes this main focus and goal spread. This is definitely one of my favorite paintings in this setup. I just love the composition. But now, let's move on to the next spread. On the left page will be my habit trackers. I just wrote a title here again. I enjoyed my interactive habit trackers last month with individual round shapes for each day so I'm doing that for my habit tracker this month. I'm using this stencil from Notebook Therapy to make these nice round shapes. I also thought this is a great opportunity to make use of the stationaries I acquired that are still waiting for me to use and not collect dust in my drawer. So I have these cottage garden pattern papers from Stationery Pal that are perfect for this theme. I chose the colors and designs that I like and cut these into smaller versions and then glued the top parts onto the page. And then I wrote the habits that I want to track on the upper left. The page next to it will be for my gratitude journal. I've used this idea last month and I wanted to include it again in this setup. In this page, I'm writing not only what I'm grateful for, but also some affirmations and highlights for the month of April. Although we have some not so good things happening in our lives and in the world right now, I think this is a great practice to write down some positive aspects to help us be more mindful and strengthen us to deal with the rough patches in life. On the bottom corner of this page, I decided to paint a girl who is picking some flowers. I am painting a bigger bush, and since we're painting it on a different angle, I made the shadows or the darker paint prominent on the right side. In this theme, I purposefully went for painting characters that are looking away and not having to paint the faces because it's just difficult for me at the moment, especially in a small illustration. 
though i am practicing it but maybe i will do it in a larger scale because the last time i did i was pretty not happy about it and i'm still creating the style that i like I was going to do linear strokes for this whole bush painting but I decided to paint more leaves on top where I ended up adding more shadows there too before painting the leaves and then on the right side as well. And then lastly, I'm painting white flowers on the bush as well on the basket and I'm painting them in different sizes. I really like how this painting turned out too, but that's it for this habit tracker and gratitude journal spread. Let's flip over to the next pages to set up my content planner. I will be using the same layout that I've been using a lot over the past months, but I also incorporated the botanical line art in this content calendar. I also decided to use this patterned paper from the set I used for my habit trackers as a divider for my content planner and socials tracker. Under it, I just drew the icons of the handles that I want to track. Then I'm using these Archer and Olive acrylograph pens to draw some rectangular boxes where I will write the subscribers and followers count. I drew them in alternate colors but I messed up with the green on the top, so I just layered it again with blue. After that, I cut this part of this page of camera so it becomes a Dutch door now. And these will be for my to-do list, currently list, and playlist. I also wrote the titles of camera too, and this is how they look. For the currently list, again this was inspired by Ashley of Real Paper Pages on Instagram. I am laying out the things I wanted to include here such as what I'm currently enjoying, learning, watching, and manifesting. For my playlist, I haven't made a list of the songs to include here so I just created this simple layout and write the songs later on. Above this Dutch door page is another painting. I am painting a girl with a bicycle in a grass field looking at a cottage from afar. I painted the background first starting from the sky with a light blue color, then the horizon with gray, 
and then the background for the field starting with a lighter shade of green and I slowly blend it with another shade of green in the middle and then it gets darker towards the bottom. After that, I painted the trees that are farther away along the horizon with a dark shade of green and then another line of this random shaped trees next to it. I painted a very simple cottage in between these lines of trees on the left side. I mentioned a while ago that I am using both techniques for the grass, so this time I am using my detailed paint brush to individually paint these strokes. Using a dark shade of green, I started with the tiny small strokes from the top as it gets longer on the bottom. I also tried to paint these strokes with different directions to make it seem more natural. I gradually added a lighter shade. And then in the end, I thought the grass looked a little bit dull, so I added some brighter shade of green to it. And then to our focal point in this illustration is another girl, again, with her bicycle and a basket of flowers. I decided to paint the initial layer with white first, so the color pops out nicely. I painted her hair with blonde again and I seriously thought that I should have painted with another hair color but yeah, I painted the blouse with white and the skirt with orange. The skirt looked a bit orangey in my eyes at first so I layered it again with a lighter tone. And to be honest, I was trying to figure out if I'm seeing my sketch clearly because some parts, especially the bicycle, has been covered so I just sketched it again on top of the paint. So if you're like me that needs a sketch when painting, remember that it's totally fine. It's essential to the process and once you get familiar with it and maybe decide to challenge yourself to paint without a sketch, then that would be equally rewarding as well. And just like my previous character paintings, I'm just finalizing this illustration with fine details on the hair, the blouse, and the skirt. Then I'm also adding some highlights on the bicycle and some flowers on the basket. And that's it for this painting and this whole spread. I also had to cover up the smudged area here with my white acrylograph pen because of my sweaty palms that reactivated the gouache paint. So make sure to put something underneath if you have the same condition as mine or maybe wear a glove. I've used so much tissue paper already in the past so I think I'll have to buy a glove or something for myself next time and don't forget to wear one so I don't mess up the pages. The final spread we will be making in this video is my first weekly spread. On this section, I'm dedicating it for a weekly diary or just a space for me to write down how my week went. Then on the page to the right will be my daily layouts. I drew 6 boxes with concave corners and botanical line art as well. I'm using the 3 acrylograph pens I used previously for the background of the days and dates. Then I decided to do a bigger painting on the other side. I started painting a cottage on the upper part of the page and please excuse the change in the lighting here because the sun shines so bright and then suddenly hides so the video got dark at some point. I painted the cottage with almost the same colors like the ones we have from the cover page. I also changed the style of the cottage and added a porch. I didn't paint the roof fully because I will be covering that with greenery later on. Then I'm painting the base layer of the front yard or the garden. 
Before adding details to the garden, I am painting this girl sitting on a blanket while reading books first. I decided to use a lavender color this time for the dress to change things up a bit. I also struggled with the braided hair and the hand on this one, but I think it turned out okay somehow in the end. There are also a basket and some more books on the blanket. It's time to add the details on the bushes or the shrubs. I also added a blob of green paint above the cottage where I'm painting some wisteria vines. I'm just doing the same technique here with the tapping movements. And just like the cover painting, I tried to create variations with the bushes and add different colors to the flowering shrubs. The final step here is the grass, again just using dark and light shades of green and doing smaller strokes towards the cottage then it gets longer towards us. I've done Dutch doors for my weeklies in the last two months and they were very convenient for me to use. But this time I really enjoyed painting these and I felt like I want to paint more of these cottage core scenes in my next weeklies. So if you would like to see how they will look like, I will be posting them on my Instagram page at Charisse along with the ones we created here. And that's finally it for my initial bullet journal setup for April. And before we end this video, let's do a reverse flip through of all the spreads we created in this setup. I really hope you enjoyed this setup and inspired you to try out gouache and recreate or create something like it in your bullet journals too. Or maybe you just enjoyed watching me paint my illustrations and draw my layouts for this month to keep you company. I am excited to know what you think about this setup in the comments and if you want to see more bullet journal and more art related videos, subscribing to the channel will be highly appreciated as always and don't forget to like and share this video too. Thank you so much for joining me in my April plan with me video. Have an amazing month ahead and I will see you in my next one. Bye everyone!